DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up. Let's get sports talk. The contract would make Prescott the seventh highest paid player for 2020 based on average per year. Not surprisingly, all are quarterbacks. It's interesting you don't see that guy from Kansas City on there. He's going to set up a whole new deal when he puts his name on a contract. Once the contract's up, Dak will take up over 14% of Dallas' salary cap. Hate to bother our friend Adam Schefter on Father's Day, but you tweet out significant news about that Prescott, and here we are. The timeline of this is what? They, they franchise him in March. You got until July 15th to come to an agreement. He's going to sign on uh, Monday this tender. The significance of this, if there's anything to be made of it, Adam, what, what, what do we make? Scott, to me, the significance is it locks Dak in for the 2020 season. We're not going to see... Le'Veon Bell, and whether or not he will or won't be reporting to camp okay. whenever everybody reports to camp. We're not going to be wondering if he's going to be there for the start of the regular season, if there is a regular season. He is locked in once he signs that exclusive franchise tender. And to me, the stakes on the poker game between the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott just got higher. Because once he does sign that, and that tag will be signed by Monday... Then the Dallas Cowboys owe him the $31.4 million for this season. And if they can't get a long-term deal done by July 15th and they have to franchise him again, guess what that number is going to be? 37.7. And if they can't get a deal done after that, the next year, it's 144% of the salary from the previous year, $54.4 million. So to me, he's got long-term leverage because the Dallas Cowboys can't afford to lose. He have plenty of leverage. Over them. Because it seems like they want him to play on his franchise tag. Now he have a good year on his franchise tag. Now he have the right to argue for a long-term contract. They want him to prove himself. And I feel like he already done that for them. But that's why they want to put the franchise tag on him. But you can't afford to lose that, um, Dak. Because if you lose him, you're going to start from scratch. With a rookie quarter, that means you got to see how he developed in the system. You got to see how he's going to pan out. And you got to uh, move slow with him. You don't want to have to start all over again when you already have a quarterback established. When you already have that guy there, you figure out a way to get a deal done to keep him there because you already got everything in place with him. But you can't afford to lose that, Prescott, because then you're going to have to go into the draft and start all over. And I know you don't want to start from the beginning again. But he had everything on his side. And he have a good year through this franchise uh, contract. If they can't get a long-term deal done and he had to play through this and then they try to put him on another one and he played good through that one, it, it, it's all about what they're trying to do. They're trying to play chess with him. But... If he moved in the right pieces, in the right places, and he do what he had to do, everything is on his side. It was Dak Prescott, and they can't have him count against their cap at the numbers he's currently slated to make each of the next couple of years. Adam, as a Washington fan, I've seen this movie before with Kirk Cousins, and there's this certain... Almost like it's insulting to keep getting this tag put on you. But, I mean, 31 and then 37.7, I mean, he'd average damn near $35 million for the next few years. Like, there's nothing insulting about that. I mean, that isn't, like, how the Prescott camp views this, is it, in terms of what he'd be getting if he didn't get the long-term deal? No, I think, look, very few quarterbacks have been willing to roll the dice and bet on themselves. And I think Dak, with the money that he's made through his marketing deals here, Coming from the background he did, is basically saying, I've already made more right. than I can hope to make. I'm going to roll the dice and bet on myself. And you know what? That's a bet I would make. Yes, that, that's a bet he will make. And I feel like he's going to put his chips in there and he's going to win. I feel like he's going to have a solid year to be able to have them look at themselves and say, we have to get him on the dollar line for a long-term contract so we can have him here as our franchise quarterback. I feel like that's what he's going to do. He's going to roll the dice on himself.
he already making good money on his marketing deals. So he feel like, okay, I'm already making money off the field. Now I'm going to go in here and on the field and just sign this franchise tag and show them why I deserve a big contract and deserve to be the franchise guy for the Cowboys. Because with the cap poised to go up over the long term with the new media rights deals, not the short term, right. with everything going on with the pandemic and the decrease in the salary cap, we can see. But over the long term, Dak is poised to make huge money. Can you imagine what it would be like if he played this year on the exclusive franchise tag? They couldn't get a deal done. They had to tag him again next year at 37-7, or they let him get to the market. What would a guy like that in his mid to late 20s make on the open market? There are very few players at the age he's at, at the position he plays, who have been able to reach true, unrestricted free agency. And that's the game that Dak Prescott is playing with the Dallas Cowboys at this particular time, Scott. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live